Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. We are going to do another elementary review and uh, this is probably going to be my last uh, video on elementary because I can't stand it and it's uh, it's time to go away. Um, so I am going to be as, uh, as unbiased as I can in this and um, I'm going to tell you what is good and what is bad. One of the things is, you know, my camera is nice and small right now. I can't make it any bigger. I mean, I'm trying to make it a little bit bigger, but I'm getting all sorts of, you know, not working quite right. It's not as bad now, but it was doing a whole lot of screen tearing, like really bad, really, really bad stuff. Uh, this seems to be okay now. Uh, I'll keep it up there, up here for now. All right. Um, let me switch that monitor off there too. All right. So... Uh, first and foremost, elementary OS has been oftentimes touted, and, and in reality, it came out really big, and I think it came out big because there were some key players in it that uh, that kind of knew some of the right people out there. And um, after looking at it, a lot of people who really wanted elementary to be an awesome distro just kind of walked away from it because it's it's really, there's nothing really special about it. In fact, more often than not, it's annoying more than anything, particularly if you're in Linux and you're used to being able to do some things on your system, uh, this actually makes it a little bit harder. Now they do tout it, it, it it's their marketing is not very clear. It's, it's completely unclear, but they do seem... Uh, to market this towards a new user. And that in and of itself for me is a little bit more dangerous because a new user will come in here and get completely frustrated with Linux. Um, if you are an old hat at Linux, you really know what you're doing. You, you can work on things well. Your typical guy like that, they'll install a system and the first thing they're going to do is boot up a terminal and terminal there and sudo app get update, sudo app get upgrade, upgrade the whole system. And if that's what you've been doing on elementary, kudos to you. It's probably working well. But every single time I've attempted to do this as a new user would install the operating system, either on real hardware like we're on right now or in a virtual box. And I've done real hardware on Intel processors. I've done real hardware on, on AMD processors. We're on AMD right now. Um, the the challenge is every single time you install the system, if you load up the updates or you click on the thing to, to load the updates when the update manager shows up, um, then what you are going to actually see is that um, it will uh, it will crash on the update. It won't push the updates through. And by the way, it took me four times before I got it installed. This operating system, and I really know what I'm doing on this stuff, took me over two hours to get installed correctly. And that's a long time. And then uh, I actually had to push the updates through the terminal, which is, I like doing that all the time anyway, but I wanted to see what this would be like from the new user experience. Now, one of the things I'm noticing right now, and I'm not sure if I actually pushed the update or if the update's not checking or if it played Windows 10 and installed itself, but it was annoying me all last week to install an update. Um, I don't remember installing it. Maybe I did. But I could not get the thing to go away, which meant it was worse than a Mac because the problem I had is that I didn't want to install the update. I intentionally did not want to install the update and the thing would just keep on sitting there annoying me. I couldn't hide the notification. I couldn't get off the dock. I could do one thing and only one thing and that was update it. And in fact, the reason I did not update it is because I wanted to... Uh, to show you one of the challenges, I'm actually going to pull up the App Center here and see if it wants to look for that update. And by the way, we're going to get rid of all the negatives first. I, there are some positives to the system, and we're going to go ahead and uh, look into those. All right. So I'm going to let that do its thing and see if it actually finds an update. Um... Up to date, it's still searching. See, I... I did not push the update. I'm not sure if it decided to install itself, play, pull a play out of Windows 10, or if it decided to, you know, completely hide itself somewhere. I don't know. I didn't do anything with it. Uh, last time I remember turning the computer on, I had the annoying App Center update. It's not there right now, but I actually wanted to show you what the update said, unless maybe it just can't find the update servers. I don't know. It's just spinning here and doing nothing. The problem is it just said update for the system, and it didn't tell me anything about what it is. 
You see, on Linux Mint that people criticize for security and whatever other things, at least when there's an update, you can read what it is, you can read the change log, you can read what the thing's doing and choose whether or not you want to update it or not. This here simply says elementary update with nothing else on it. And so a person doesn't know what the problem is. That's particularly significant because if you're watching the news, you know that the Windows 10, there it is, uh, you'll note the Windows 10 updates uh, right now um, for the Spectre and the Meltdown, they are breaking AMD machines. You got to go in and figure out what that update is and tell it, don't install this update, hide this update for now, because it's breaking Windows 10 machines. And actually, I don't think the Windows 7 patch is out yet, but um, that's kind of significant. So here's our App Center. This is all we get. Operating system updates. This is good how? For a, for a new user, sure. But a new user couldn't get this far because the system would crash before you were, were able to actually update it. All right. So, and it will kind of perpetually sit here in this state. This is annoying. Next thing I'm going to show you is, and I'm not sure if this is a thing linked directly to Skype or if all applications would happen to do this. Um, uh, so here and uh, under your applications, find your startup applications, you'll see that Skype for Linux is on here and it's set to auto auto install. I'm going to delete it because I do not want Skype to auto run because it's annoying. I want to turn it on when I want to turn it on. So I'm going to quit Skype. All right, now notice that here if I pull up the applications, pull up the startup, Go away, Skype, go away. <laughs> and by the way, I have attempted doing that as well. It doesn't seem to work either. Um, but every time you touch Skype and the thing does isn't letting me, there it goes, okay. Anytime you touch Skype, it's going to auto add itself to the system. So I've touched Skype. It is slightly slower because I'm on the video right now. I'm gonna minimize that. So all we've done is started Skype. We didn't do anything else. Come back in application, start up. So every time you touch Skype, whether you open it or whether you close it, Skype will start the very next time you start your computer. I have turned, I have gotten deleted Skype from this list and turned it off on this system over here so many times it makes me mad. But Skype is just, it's, we've touched it. It should be toggled back to on now. Again, I don't know if this is directly related to Skype itself or if any startup type application will behave this way. It's turned back on again. So it's beyond annoying. <laughs> okay. And yes, for those people that will like, I am a business person. I have to have Skype because it's what my clients use. So just, you know, because somebody always is like, use wire, use this, use that. I will use where my business people are at. Thank you very much. All right, uh, next thing let's look at is, um, let's have a look at the beauty of the system. People are like, it's elegant. And I think they just copied Mac, made it look like an iHome device. Ever see an iHome device? It's that cheap knockoff Apple type stuff. It's all the keyboard equipment stuff that's, that's done in an eye and all whites instead of the blacks, like the Windows PCs, the Logitech's black, dark, gray, uh, and all the Apple, nice, white. Um, and you get the iHome cheap knockoff brand of stuff, then they completely suck. They don't ever really work. You see them at like Ollie's and stuff. Um, but they're white. They're designed to kind of look like Apple. That's what this system reminds me of. It's designed to sort of look like Apple, but it lacks the elegance. And I don't even think Apple particularly, Mac is particularly elegant. However, uh, this is bad. So I'm going to show you the apps that the system wants you to use first. I've installed a lot of my own applications. One of the challenges I get is oftentimes when I go to launch the Epiphany browser, I actually have to hit the button twice. Now, usually I have to hit it twice when the system first turns on. So I can think I launched the Epiphany browser and it will, uh, it will kind of load up. So you'll see it's done swirling and I got nothing. Let's try that again. 
There it goes. So you kind of have to hit it twice. Now, as far as the look and the design, if you are used to Mac products, you know that this look is attempting to completely duplicate Mac. Everything is on is mirror imaged of where it is on the Windows based systems. The favicons are on the uh, are on you know the right side of the tab instead of the left, and the close button is on the left side of the tab instead of the right. It's completely backwards. All right, uh, which is a similar thing to what Mac does. But if you notice right here, you have a very hard time quickly spotting which is my open tab. You see that? You have a hard time spotting which is the open tab. Of course, it's the middle one. So the, the problem is, is that they give you the, the colors on the one side, but it's not a, a, different, a, a different. So if I load up, for example, Chromium, um, then this will actually give you, um, this will actually give you, if you load up multiple different tabs, you can very quickly see which tab is your active tab right? Because of the coloration differences. And so those little details, and there's actually other places where those details come into play. So for example, if I load up any of the built-in applications, uh, this one looks like it may not apply to that. I was looking at several, okay, uh, yeah, okay. So it's this application here. Many of your applications will not actually have your bar up and down the middle. And so if you have two windows open side by side, I'm trying to remember what the other windows were I was working with this. Um, but you'll have two windows side by side and they'll merge into each other. I think this one's just because the system settings um, doesn't have that, that other bar. But uh, we'll look at some of the other applications that come built in. Of course, uh, another one that I've criticized deeply in the past is the email application. I've got to find it. Come on. Okay, so here's your mail application. Okay, now the problem is with the mail application is you only have an option. So we can do Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook, and other. We only have an option to use an IMAP method of interacting with the system. I don't have the option to do POP3. So this thing automatically, it's like not a very robust system. It seems to be extremely lacking in features. Uh, let's pull up, let's see. What else comes pre-installed on this guy? Not a lot comes pre-installed. Uh, here's your built-in music app. I don't really, as you can see, I don't really use any of these. I use Kodi or VLC for some of this stuff. Um, I am using the Epiphany with some things, so even this guy here, um, I couldn't even really get this guy working. I couldn't make connections to my network, and that's why I'm using Kodi, uh, because I can connect to the network with Kodi, things like that. But you'll see up here in the design, again, it is designed to duplicate in Mirror Mac, except one thing is they don't give you the minimize button. I had to put the tweak tools on here, which they keep breaking. Um, the maximize is on one side, the close is on the other side. So for a new user, that's going to be quite confusing. And so I, I, I disagree that this system lacks the elegance that people talk about. Like it's elegant, it's clean. I don't think it is. I think it's hard to use. It's difficult to see which tabs are on. The system seems fairly slow. Now it's a little slower now because I'm recording video. It's usually a little bit more uh, more jumpy than than it is right now. So a lot of the slowness you've been seeing here uh, is because we are recording HD video at the same time. The epiphany issue I showed you, that's a common thing. Always have to hit that thing a couple times to actually get loaded. Um, and a few other things. Um, let's go ahead and let's see. I think I've covered everything I didn't like about the system. Um, I'm going to cut the camera down a little bit. This is another thing is... Um, hello, uh, please, other one? Okay, give me an error, I don't know. Uh, there it is, this is what I was looking for. How do you possibly get those up? I mean, they're, the, the only real, real good way is to hit, um, is it all, this one. This is the only tab I could do. Of course, now I have two of these open. I have no idea why I have two of these open now. I don't know. Um, I'm just gonna cut the camera down a little bit. Oh, okay, apparently that wasn't it. Can I quit this one? I don't know. All right. 
Okay, so the things that I like about it. Once you get through all of these hurdles, um, I guess, I'm sorry, I got to jump back onto some negatives. For anybody wanting to do basic things like install .dev packages or add PPAs or things like that, you know, the things that, that the, the new users wouldn't know how to do, um, you have to install extra code to do that. You, you need to install extra packages uh, just to be able to add the things. Of course, the seasoned Linux guys, we know how to do all that kind of stuff. So it just becomes an annoyance that we have to do extra steps to install basic applications. Um, uh, but regardless, now uh, once all that stuff is done, as far as the stability of the system, this is the only system that I use over here consistently that does not give me any stutter on video. But that's only related to the Epiphany browser, which admittedly I don't use anywhere else. So in other words, if I pull up a YouTube video on Epiphany browser and watch it, the video plays straight through flawlessly, no hiccups in sound, no hiccups in video when the browser works. Would you please minimize? Thank you. Um, but when the Epiphany browser is playing that, and I have not attempted things like view.yahoo.com where I catch some things more DRM-y type stuff, which may or may not work. I didn't, haven't tried it. But when I'm watching YouTube on the Epiphany browser, you get no stuttering of the video. You get no stuttering of the sound. This is the only system I have that does that. But if I watch the same videos on Chromium here, which is what I usually do on other systems, um, then it does still give me that stuttering. So there's a little bit of stuttering, which seems to be more related to Chromium than it does be related to the operating system or anything else. And so that's something is that the, the applications it does come installed with, with the file system, Epiphany, they are smaller, lighter weight, and they do seem to function well. The system, as long as I avoid the... Uh, the danger zones, and I have to learn what the danger zones are, like for example in this one, the shortcut keys. As long as I, uh, um, um, as long as I avoid the danger zones, I have good system stability. Um, going in, trying to change shortcuts, always crashes the system. Few other things crash the system, uh, but as long as you figure out what those areas are and stay out of those areas, the system is very stable. I haven't had any other real problems otherwise. It does boot pretty quick. It'll shut down pretty quick. Um, and uh, yeah, that might be about it. I mean, once you get the applications installed that you need installed, get the stock set up, that's kind of, it's kind of it. But that's about it. I guess the other good thing, I didn't mention it here, is it does have really good parental controls. So if you have a computer in your house and you're worried about your kids spending too much time on it, whatever else, the parental controls on the user account uh, built into elementary are better than anything else I've seen built into a Linux distro. You can set time limits on apps. You can set certain apps to be used. Uh, you can set the internet to be usable or not. A lot of cool functionality in the parental controls in this system. So if you do have a family and you just need a basic operating system and uh, you want to regulate that and give your kids their own user accounts, this is one of the best operating systems to use for that respect. Um, I guess I'll mention also on the good end is the Cody Media Center uh, works. I don't recall having any problems at all. Um, I do have challenges on the Debian system where on the Debian, anytime I launch Cody, it will max the volume on the system. Uh, this does not have that problem, although Debian is the only place I've seen that problem. Um, but the, the Kodi works great. It toggles in and out of full screen uh, flawlessly. Um, no stuttering on the, on the, the video or, or audio or anything else. So that system works. I guess, though, another attached downside is even on Kodi, if you don't touch the screen, it will actually go and it will actually turn off the screen. If you let it sit one more minute, it will actually lock the computer. So actually that's another negative is as you're playing music or even playing YouTube videos, whatever else, if you're not touching the mouse or the keyboard, it's going to lock the system on you. It doesn't, it doesn't prevent the system from locking. Um, so that's, I guess, more of a negative on that side as well. Um, let's see. I'm using Evolution and Thunderbird as email clients. I've done some editing on GIMP without any problem. I actually have not used Midori or Aurora. I have those installed just in case I wanted to use uh, use those with some of my other YouTube accounts. But um, I've just, if I've needed those, I've just booted into Debian or whatever else. So um, that's not much of an issue. That's about it. I mean, my final take, I don't think elementary is a very good OS. Um, 
I mean, I, I appreciate the work that, that went into it, but as far as it's, it's not really for a seasoned Linux guy because they complicate simple things like adding PPAs and installing dev packages. It's not for a new person because the basic GUI doesn't work half the time and there's several places where things get locked out. Uh, the system freezes and the UI controls are very unfriendly and that there's no minimize button. The, mi the maximize and close are on opposite screens and it's really hard to see on the built-in apps what screens and tabs you're on and things like that. So I'm not sure who this distro is for. It's like a bipolar distro. There's parts of it that are good for new users, parts of it that are bad for new users, and likewise parts of it that are really good for the seasoned user, and parts of it that are really bad for the seasoned user. I guess if you want to look like this, go for it. Uh, but if you're looking for a good, fun OS that you can customize and make your own, elementary is probably not the one for you. Uh, even as far as stability, whatever else, I mean, it's stable, but... I can point out several other distros that are even more stable than this. I don't really see uh, a huge a huge reason to use elementary. Um, it's fun. It's fun to look at the first couple of times, but frankly, it gets stale. It gets boring. It gets old, um, and it gets frustrating. It is a very frustrating distro, both to get working, to get everything installed, and to get the packages that you like. It's frustrating. Um, so that's kind of my, my final take home message. I mean, not to knock the thing, not to say, you know, it's absolutely horrible. Um, I just don't know who it's for and I'm not sure it knows who it's for. So that's kind of my take home on elementary. I hope this has been helpful for you. You can check out switch to linux.com forward slash support to learn more about switch to Linux. Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.